Having your stock stationary while you work on the surface is an important function of a woodworker's bench vise, but besides that function, another important and more used feature of this style of vise in my shop is to attach and secure tools and jigs to the surface. Because they allow the surface to be unobstructed, allowing you full access to the top of your bench, I strongly believe that every workbench should have a vise of this type. Today, we're going to be reviewing and installing this Viver woodworking vise. It's budget friendly, and it's a tool that you won't regret buying. Before I get started, the Viver vise that I have here is on clearance. When I got mine, Viver told me that there were less than 200 of these left and that once they're gone, they are gone. If you are just starting out and money is tight, you should give this a look. Because this is such a common woodworking vise design, this video build will work for any vise of this style if you find that Viver stock has run out. We've got the vise, we've got the connecting screws. Wait a second, where's the handle at? This is a pretty common thing for these style of vices. They don't come with handles, nor do they come with the wooden jaws needed to do the clamping. In a bit, I'll show you how you can make a budget handle for less than $5. Where's the instruction manual at? Unfortunately, an instruction manual doesn't come with this vise. So if you're looking for a long step-by-step -step build, you aren't gonna find it in the box. There really is a good reason for this though. Not all benches are the same. Some have skirts, some have flat surfaces, some have steel rails. It would be difficult to include the right build for your bench. It does come with four bolts and four nuts, but these are used to attach the front jaw. There will be some additional hardware that you're gonna have to buy to attach the vise to the bottom of the table. But don't worry, I've listed all the screws I use so you have a better understanding of what you're working with. It should go without saying that attaching this to a bench is gonna be a little bit different depending on the, the bench that you have. But generally, you want the first half of the vise, the part that's attached to the table, to be level with the edge of the table. This allows you to use the full length of your table to be part of the clamp. I will be attaching this to the Viver table that I reviewed last month. If you'd like to watch that video, I've got a link right up here. But I've already got my table flipped upside down and we're gonna go ahead and start working on this. We do have the steel angle that's cumbersome on this table, but I found a way to work with it. The first thing I'll do is take a two by eight and cut nine and a half inches from the end of it. This fits between the screws that hold the apron onto the table, but doesn't quite fit inside the apron and I really want it to be flush against the inside. So I set my table saw blade three quarters of an inch off the table and I'll nibble a 32nd of an inch off of each side. It fits pretty good now. We'll take the vise apart really quickly and now I've got the base. This will attach to our cutoff and the cutoff to the underside of the table. The next thing we'll need is a board that will act as the back clamp face. It'll fit against the front side of the rail, but there's only an 11 16 of an inch from the rail to the front of the table. So I'll cut a rabbit in a thicker piece of stock, again, on the table saw. I'll need to raise my blade an inch and five eighths off the table, which is the height of the rail. And then I'll cut everything but the 11 16 of the board that will fit against the front of the rail. This is the finished cut back jaw. Not only does it slide in flush to the bottom of the table, but it's also flush on the face so that any stock that's put against it will be supported by the table as well as the clamp face. I've already cut the front of the job. We'll need to cut out three holes out of both pieces for the guide bars and for the screw. The holes need to line up with both jaws. So I'll attach both pieces together with double-sided tape and drill all three holes out at the same time. The bottom side of both jaws will need to be flush with each other. I'm just gonna add a mark to make sure that I don't mix this up later on and I know how it goes back together. Before I do anything else, I wanna connect my cutoff piece to the table and make sure that it's all secured. I'm gonna add screws here, here, and in the middle here. I'll go ahead and line this up to the back and I'm gonna find exactly where I want it and then I'm gonna add some screws. I'll add the jaws to the front and I'm gonna use two bits, an 11 16 and a three quarter inch bit to mark the holes. And these are spade bits. My three quarter inch is gonna be the large one for the screw. I'll just slide it in there and make a mark. And now I've got my three marks here and I can drill them out. One thing I really like about the guide bars as well as the screw is 
the, the holes that we add to this don't need to be the, the same size. They just need to be a little bit larger. So I'm actually gonna go up to an inch. Now I did find a flaw with this. When I went to put in the guide rods, these screws made it so that I couldn't slide them in. So I'm gonna be getting rid of them. Right now we'll go ahead and slide the back jaw in. And what you could do at this point is run screws through the stretcher into that scrap block that we put in there. But I'm gonna use some corner braces to attach it to my block. I'll add the front jaw, make sure I've got my marks in the right place and slide this on. The screw assembly is gonna have this flat section pointed to the top of the bench. The guide bars will fit through the plate and then we'll add our washer as well as the acorn. I'm gonna tighten this up really good. To attach the vise to the front of the jaw, they've left us with these M6 that are an inch and a quarter long. Each of my pieces are an inch and a half. So what I would need to do is drill a hole all the way through. And then on the other side, I would need to enlarge the hole so that I could put a nut in it and then tighten it all down. I really think that this is a terrible way to attach this. My other vise, I just use screws. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. I've got some screws here and I'm just gonna go ahead and, and drill these out and then screw them in. And once you've got it flush to the table on both sides, go ahead and clamp it down. I've added some tape so that I don't go too far and we'll go ahead and drill these out. And really that's it. There's not a whole lot to this. I've got a nice functional vise that will work on this table. Of course this vise is useless if you don't have a way to spin the screw in the vise to open and close the jaws. We'll make a very simplified one with a 7 8 dowel and two hex bolts. A 7 8 dowel on its own would work, but obviously it would want to slip out as you're using it. So I'm gonna use a couple of bolts here as well as some locking nuts. And now we can just thread our bolts through and add a nut on each side. Now this does work, but if you're just looking for functionality and you wanna be able to suspend a bar inside of the slot and you don't want to slide out, I've got something a lot easier. We'll set this aside. I've got a new 7 8 dowel here. Again, these I think these are about 12 inches long. Instead of using bolts, just use a couple screws. These are number 10 by a half inch. Drill a screw into each side, it won't come out. There's a third option that I really like. I'm gonna remove one of these and I'm gonna add a spinner on the end. Now this spinner is nice. You can get them at any auto store. They, they work on, on the wheel of your car or lawnmowers. This fits, but even at its tightest setting, it doesn't hold it in place. So I've drilled a hole on the end. I'll take a drill now and I'm just gonna add a little bit of a pilot hole in here. And now I can just take a screw, add it to the end as well as adding a screw on the other side. And really that's all that's needed to create a spinning handle. As a woodworking bench vise, this does everything it needs to do. It, it opens and closes, it holds things to the surface. It has a tight grip. In fact, there's really nothing I found with this vise that seems out of place. The one thing I haven't tried is purposely racking the vise or putting a board on one side of the vise and clamping down. And I won't do that because these vices are not designed to do anything but hold stock along the inside of the vise. I think comparing this vise to a premium vise is probably the most fair thing I can do to show you why this is as inexpensive as it is. Having used the Wood River vise, I believe is now going for about $200, I'll share some of the pros and cons that this Viver vise has compared to it. If you look at both of my vices side by side, you can see that there's an obvious difference here. The Wood River vise that I bought a few years ago has a 1 and 3 16 inch screw on it, whereas the Viver has a 15 16 inch screw. The length of the Wood River is gonna be 17 inches compared to 13 inches. So there is a big difference between the two just visually looking at it. Having used this vise for a number of years, I rarely ever open it more than maybe three or four inches, maybe five inches tops. So in, in my situation, having this long screw really never has ever paid off for me. With the Viver, you are getting a shorter capacity, but what are you looking for in a vise? Now, another big difference between the two is that the threads are a lot wider 
in the Wood River compared to the Beaver. What does that mean? That means that it's gonna take fewer turns with the Wood River compared to the Beaver. Overall, I think that the Beaver Vice is a great vice. I think that you can pay a lot more money, but if you're not using it, then this might be a waste for you and this might be all that you ever need. If you're interested in getting this, I'll have a link to a discount in the description. Besides the vice I just reviewed, there's a second vice that's being discontinued from Beaver as well. I'll also leave a link and a discount code for that one, so be sure to check the description. Whether or not you choose to buy this vice, do yourself a favor and buy a vice of this kind. They are invaluable for workbenches. I'd like to quickly thank my patrons for providing funding for both the website that I list my free plans on, as well as the digital materials that go into making each of these videos. I could not do this without you. Thank you so much. If you'd like to help as well, I have a link in my description to my Patreon. Thank you. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, Tudor the Barbarian, Mike Lornitis, Les N, and Gary G. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob. And remember to keep making things. Thank you.